Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hope you are having fun and are excited about the intelligent web ahead of us. I am, um, uh, and f first, let's give a round of applause for Jason and Google for bringing all of us here to talk about advancing the web. Uh, I'm uh, Mo Hagigat, uh, Intel fellow. I lead all Intel's uh, technical work in the area of web technologies. I am representing Intel team who over the past years have contributed over 12,000 patches to Chromium, the foundation of Chrome browser as well as Edge browser. Uh, why do uh, uh, we, we care about web? Of course, in addition to the ubiquitous software that connects and en enriches the lives of everybody, our telemetry shows that when people are on PC, two-thirds of their time is spent on the web, on the browsers, on the web applications. So that is essentially two-thirds of Intel PC business. So that's why we dearly care about web and advancing it uh, forward. Um, now, with AI coming, Intel is basically reimagining uh, uh, PC. AI PC is PC reimagined for awesome AI experiences. If you look at the history, there was a time that x86, we didn't have floating point support. Then we had floating point coprocessor, then we had integrated floating point. The same thing with graphics, and now integrated graphics. Now the same thing is happening with a larger magnitude with AI. So AI PC is, is, is a big deal, is a major, basically, uh, inflection point in PC going forward. Intel, we believed that in the spectrum of AI experiences, there are different classes of a, a, essentially AI usages. Some of them, you may want to do a quick, small machine learning execution. And uh, for that, CPU actually might be the best choice you have. And then there might be cases that you need a large, uh, highly throughput, essentially high compute use cases, and GPU might be your best choice. And then maybe you want to have sustained AI uh, experience, so power efficiency is important. So NPU uh, is uh, perhaps your best choice. So we believe in this uh, three multi-engine uh, strategy going forward. And that is what AIPC is about. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, we announced Lunar Lake, the latest edition of AIPC with tremendous improvement on the, uh, over the previous uh, 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 AIPC Meteor Lake, which was announced basically last December. Now, this was announced just a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, with unmatched total compute of 120 uh, uh, tera operation per second from GPU, NPU, and CPU. Innovation and advancement in all three engines of, uh, of Lunar Lake. 120 tops overall total compute. Unmatched AI compute on PC ever. Now, uh, advancement in GPU, XMX, which is matrix extension uh, support, uh, is one of the part of uh, G GPU in Lunar Lake, giving it uh, up to 3.5x speed up on execution, as well as power efficiency. On a NPU, doubling the power efficiency of NPU gen over gen. And on CPU, better microarchitecture, new instruction, VNNI instruction, 8-bit instruction, all together uh, essentially making unmatched AI compute on PC. Now, you, we want web to be able to harness this full power of the platform. So we want an API that can run on all of these uh, hardware engines. And they do not want developers have to worry about programming it for one uh, accelerator versus the other one. After all, these things change over time. And what is you know, uh, ideal right now may not be ideal in the future. So we want one API that can run on all of them. Here comes WebNN. We started that back in uh, 2019 with Microsoft. I think Chai is there, uh, co-editor, co-spec editor with my brilliant colleague, Ninjin Hu at, at Intel. And since version two of WebNN, 
Google has joined, major contribution with Google's team. Uh, Hugging Face has joined. Thanks so much, uh, Joshua. So, and then more recently, Apple has joined and NVIDIA uh, has joined. So we are looking forward to an industry coalition for defining a ubiquitous uh, AI API for AI inference on the web that can run on all operating system, on all browsers, on all hardware. So it is a standard web API. It intrinsically supports heterogeneous execution on all these uh, essentially technology, CPU, GPU, NPU, and other accelerators that will come. It is already integrated in, in Onyx Runtime Web and hopefully soon uh, uh, LightRT. It delivers near native execution characteristics, near native performance, near native power. And, and more important, I think, it is fundamental general model, computational graph. You just describe the computational graph, the system will do it the best way that it, uh, for you. Bring your own model. That is basically the paradigm. Uh, this uh, you saw in, uh, in the previous uh, presentation by R Rob Raphael. This is basically the how WebNN relates to other components of web technology. You know, your frame model framework. You can go to CPU if you want using WASM, and WASM we help bringing SIMD support to that. That is data parallelism at the instruction level. On GPU, essentially, you can go to Web GPU. But WebNN is the one and only one API for general AI that can target all these execution providers. Now, uh, WebNN was announced at Microsoft Build at, at the end of the May, this past May, by uh, Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft. And uh, there is a, um, a site hosted by Microsoft that uh, basically hosts the demos that you know, we have worked together. And I highly encourage everyone to, to, to try that. Now, I will show you a sequence of demos uh, side by side what uh, we showed at the Build Conference on Meteor Lake in May with now what is on Lunar Lake, which is the latest AI PC. So side by side, you see how much improvement over this short period of time has happened. And so quickly, it is absorbed by WebNN, it is on the web, and you can try that. First is segment anything. This is originally from Meta. You see, like five months ago, we were getting like 40 milliseconds. Now we are doing it in 20 milliseconds. So it's so fast. Why, instead of doing it on the device, you would want to go to the cloud, to the internet, you know, network, and all that, how much energy you are spending. It can be done effectively better, you know, better latency, reduced cost, better privacy, and, uh, and less total energy essentially consumed um, altogether. Next, I will show you segment anything. Raphael showed you, uh, uh, sorry, stable diffusion. Raphael showed you stable diffusion running on different hardware GPUs, discrete GPUs. I will show you basically the advancement on integrated GPU of Intel uh, from just the last made till now. On the left side, you see Meteor Lake running uh, stable diffusion, ge generating a cat with the characteristics you want. And then on the right is Lunar Lake. And now next we will be doing essentially a tiger. And you see that uh, Lunar Lake already finished a tiger while um, Meteor Lake is starting to work on that. You see, instead of essentially three seconds, it is doing it in less than one second. In fact, it is 700 milliseconds. I have a Lunar Lake laptop back there. Just feel free to come and try that and enjoy it and give it a hug. It is really, really fast. <laughs> so uh, you saw the beauty here is you do not need to change anything. It just innovation in the GPU is coming through the RecML, through the meta commands, absorbed by WebNN in the framework in your application. And this is win, win, win. I think we want the hardware companies to, to bring innovation and users and developers benefit from that immediately. And that is the benefit of having one single API for accomplishing that on all these technologies, underlying technologies. Next, I show a live object detection. This is Meteor Lake demo. Uh, we are showing the, uh, basically a, a, a phone to the camera of a laptop, and a video is played. And so the object detection is performed by NPU. And you 
see it is done at 100 frames per second with 37% NPU utilization. And uh, you see C GPU is busy because it's capturing the camera, and NPU is busy because it was doing object detection. This is like AI PC at its best. All these co compute essentially capabilities are used in this, in this demo. Now remember, it was 100 frames per second with 36% NPU utilization. Now here we go on Lunar Lake. The same demo. You see like 160 frames per second, 150 frames per second, and NPU utilization is just 21%. It is much more capable. It's a lot more power efficient. And this is the beginning of another trend. Just remember Moore's law. AI is going to become faster. Web AI is going to become better, faster, more efficient going, going forward. Next, I will show you a demo, a POC demo, that we work together with Microsoft with Khan Academy. Khan Academy, we all know, great, great software for education. They have a, a, an intelligent agent now called Khan Migo that is basically for personalized uh, AI assistant for students, for teachers. The interaction with the system is through natural language processing, through a student taught, and then uh, basically the command is sent to the cloud. It is processed, the results are given back. We prototype a on-device speech-to-text using WebNN for Conmigo. Now, you will see this demo. Speech-to-text of that is done completely on device, using Whisper Base, thank you, Joshua, and Hugging Face for the base work there. And then uh, in the middle, we disconnect the Wi-Fi so that still it is doing the same thing, but without any interruption whatsoever, everything done on device. Yes. Let's debate whether homework is necessary or if it should be banned. You see, now the command is sent, essentially. And then you see Wi-Fi is disconnected. All right. I'll take the side that homework is necessary. Here's why. Homework is like the extra practice you do in sports. It helps you get better at what you learn in school, just like practicing kicking helps you get better at soccer. All right. So on device, speech to text, and it actually is three times faster than the speech itself. So it is perfect uh, real-time speech-to-text on device running on NPU. We have it running on, G on GPU also. But, you know, again, going back to the, uh, the premise of NPU for sustained uh, power-efficient experience, you want NPU for fast, quick, large compute. You want, uh, you want GPU, and you want one API, and that is WebNN. So now uh, it delivers, I, I said WebNN delivers near native performance, and uh, you will see here essentially a, a, a uh, here, uh, orange, if you were doing basically all these models using base WebAssembly, dark blue is native of uh, basically the same model that is a highly optimized XNN pack, and light blue is what WebNN delivers on CPU. And you see, it, it, it basically gives about 93% of native, and our definition of uh, near native as agreed by Google and Microsoft, is above 80%. And you see we are already really near native. And if you use WebNN, you get much better performance on CPU than if you are using uh, WASM base. Even if you do relaxed WASM, you get better uh, using, using WebNN. The same is true with GPU. You see 83% of native, uh, essentially, GPU. We are getting it with, with WebNN. And uh, so is the case with, with NPU. Now, why, why you see such a, a major improvement? It is because of this new capability on, on, on the uh, WebNN GPU side, because uh, XMX new matrix extension are brought in to direct ML, are absorbed by uh, WebNN, and delivered to the, to the application. And you see speed up of 2, 2x, 3x, 3.5. 5x, essentially, uh, without any code change. And that is wonderful. We are also improving SIMD 
uh, basically performance working. We, we have blended this optimization called revectorization. As you know, WASM is 128 bit SIMD. Now, when we defined WASM a, a decade ago with Mozilla, with Google, with Microsoft, with ARM, uh, while in Intel had wider instruction, 256 and even 512 on the server side, we started with 128 bit because it was the least basically common denominator of everybody. But now, on on the fly, we have this optimization that revectorizes WASM code where possible to wider instruction, and we are getting significant improvement. So while uh, WASM SIMD is 128-bit, uh, this revectorization does a great job. It's not as simple as I'm showing here in this picture because it has to do data dependence analysis, make sure there's no violation, etc. But significant improvement, and you see improvement over basically base WASM over even uh, basically relaxed WASM, which is a basic, basically a, another improvement that is happening in the WASM world. And across the board, significant improvement. You see in all these benchmarks, revectorization re is doing much better. We are actually also working on important application with some of ISVs that are using WebAssembly technology to ensure the heuristics that are in V8 basically revectorizer delivers really Good, good performance, and it really is doing amazing on these kernels of machine learning. One recent development here is M scripting was limited to only 128 bit of uh, essentially AVX in intrinsics. If your native application was using AVX int intrinsic, it, it, uh, M scripting would only compile the 128 bit, not the wider one. We completed the, the entire 256 bit, basically AVX intrinsics. Not only M scripting can compile it now, but then it, it does it in a way that revectorizer takes advantage of that. So this improved base, basically, WASM technology. And um, we have been working with Google on excellent pack optimization and uh, VNNI support, et cetera, that will come to you. So um, try Babenen. It's in origin trial, as Raphael and, and Rob mentioned. Give us feedback. Join us in shaping it. Brings essentially applications. For origin trial, we really welcome an exciting application to be highlighted as uh, applications that are going to take advantage of WebNN. Uh, there are demos here, samples, spec, explainer, and uh, uh, as well as tutorial. And yeah, please uh, try, enjoy. And and as I mentioned, Lunar Lake Laptop there, go and just try it. There are not that many such systems out. When, you, when it comes to market, buy it. It's really amazing, <laughs> amazing laptop. And thank you so much and for your time.